Update, am I the a-hole for telling my wife her parents are not allowed to watch our son ever again? Original story. My wife and I have a two-year-old son and have been married for four years. Our anniversary was a month ago and we found a nice, secluded cabin on Airbnb and rented it out for a long weekend getaway. My wife asked her parents if they would be willing to watch our son, and they agreed, as long as we dropped him off at their house. That worked for us since it was on our way anyway. I was raised Lutheran and my wife was raised Catholic, but neither of us currently go to church and have not had our son baptized. My mother-in-law knows this and hates it. She thinks our son needs to be baptized or he will burn in hell, she's that kind of Catholic. So, we go on our trip and when we pick up our son and ask how the weekend went, mother-in-law says everything went fine, and that she has saved my son's soul from the devil. I ask her what she meant, and she says she had our son baptized that morning at her church. I tried my best to keep my cool so I didn't scream at mother-in-law in front of my son, but I pretty much grabbed my son and left. On the car ride home, I was fuming and told my wife as calmly as I could, that this would be the last time her parents have our son unsupervised. She tried to downplay what her mom had done, but I told her we need to wait until we get home to talk about it, because I'm not fighting in front of my kid. When we got home and had a chance to talk about it, things got heated. I told my wife I no longer trust her parents with our son, and that if they did something like this behind our backs, I can't trust them to respect our wishes as parents in the future. I said this was a huge breach of trust and I will forever look at her mom differently. She continued to try to defend her mom, saying that she was only doing what she thought was best for her grandson. She even downplayed it by saying, that it's just a little water and a few words and we don't go to church anyway, so what does it matter? I told her, that under no circumstances will I allow her parents to watch our son by themselves again. I said that we can still let them see their grandson, but only if we are present. I also said, that if she doesn't see what the big deal is with this situation, that maybe we aren't on the same page as parents and maybe we need to see a counselor. She started crying and said that this isn't the kind of decision I get to make on my own, and I'm an a-hole for trying to tell her what kind of relationship her parents can have with our son. I told her that I no longer have any trust or respect for her parents, and that I don't know if there's anything they can do to repair that. I told her I don't care if that makes me an a-hole, but what her parents did was unforgivable in my eyes and they put themselves in this position to lose privileges with our son. She's been trying to convince me to change my mind for the last month, but I'm not budging. To me, this is a hill I'm willing to die on. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. These types of baptisms violate church law, and if it actually was done by their priest you should contact the bishop and file a complaint. Is a secret baptism against the parents' wishes the right thing to do? No. In fact, the church prohibits a secret baptism without the knowledge or approval of the parents. I did not know this. Thank you for this, I will be doing that ASAP. I was going to say something along these lines as well. There were a number of hoops to jump through when my kids were baptized. One of which included going to a class and signing paperwork. It's possible your mother-in-law is lying or that it's not an official baptism. Not the a-hole. That was a huge breach of trust. Nothing religious should be done unilaterally, either by the parents or in this case, grandparents. I do agree that counseling would be a good avenue for you both to get on the same page. Also, apparently you're an a-hole for telling her that her parents can no longer see your son unsupervised, but they aren't a-holes for the unauthorized baptism? What? I'm guessing OP's wife has the opinion of oh, it doesn't mean anything since we aren't religious, and it makes my mom feel better, so what's the harm? Which is pretty fair. The act of the actual baptism is kinda whatever, since neither of them are religious. The issue is that, the mother-in-law did this, knowing it was against the parents' wishes, behind their backs. I think the wife is missing that point. If the mother-in-law is fine ignoring their wishes on this, she clearly will have no issue doing it again in the future. Hence the consequences slash boundaries, until she can prove she respects them as parents. Now for the update. First off. I want to thank everyone who sent me supportive messages and advice, I never expected my post to get so much attention. Since many of you requested an update, here we go. Turns out some of you were right, my wife was in on it. I confronted her a couple days after I posted and directly asked her if she knew that her parents planned this. She broke down and confessed everything to me. Mother-in-law had been pestering her about baptizing our son non-stop, and my wife finally caved. My wife has been working from home during the pandemic while my job requires me to go into the office. 
my wife and mother-in-law started doing Zoom meetings with mother-in-law's priest to start the baptism process. They lied to the priest and told him that I was okay with baptizing our son, but didn't want to be involved. The priest allowed it and they started doing online baptism classes while I was at work. My wife admitted that she planned it around our anniversary getaway, and that mother-in-law had somehow convinced the priest that her and father-in-law would be the only ones in attendance. My wife told me that I wasn't supposed to find out, but mother-in-law couldn't keep her mouth shut for even one day about it. Their intention was to keep this from me permanently. I did contact the church to let them know the truth. I talked with the priest and he was surprisingly helpful. He said he would take the proper steps to make sure mother-in-law is no longer welcome in their church, and to reach out to the local parish to see what further steps need to be taken. I have yet to hear back from them on that. My wife and mother-in-law are mad that I got her kicked out of her church, but I don't care what they think or feel anymore. These people who I love and trust, had betrayed me and I felt a range of emotions I didn't know existed. My wife begged for forgiveness, but the fact that she didn't come clean on her own, makes me feel she would have kept this from me unless I confronted her. She's willing to do therapy, counseling, whatever it takes. I don't know if I want to put in that work, I feel like there's no coming back from this. I contacted a divorce lawyer and started discussing what a divorce would look like, and if there is any way I can add provisions to a divorce agreement that would keep my in-laws from seeing my son unsupervised. He's been very helpful, but I have not given him the go-ahead to actually file for divorce yet. I feel I am still too angry about the entire thing to think rationally and want to give myself time to fully grasp what a divorce will mean for me and my family. My wife and I aren't talking much. I pretty much go to work, come home to play with my son, go to bed, and repeat. I don't know what the future is going to bring, but I do know that without the support and help from people here, I don't think I would have the clarity I do now. Now for the top comments. I'm sorry you're going through all this, and I'm particularly sorry the one person you should be able to trust in this mess, is on the wrong side. If you don't feel like therapy with her would be productive right now, maybe consider going on your own to see if you can sort through the anger enough to figure out the path ahead. I think this is extremely telling though. My wife and mother-in-law are mad that I got her kicked out of her church. You did not get mother-in-law kicked out. The priest, aka the person with more incentive to be concerned about your child's spiritual well-being than your feelings than anyone else in this situation, looked at the matter objectively and went, this is not what God wants, and our community doesn't want it either. The fact that this hasn't prompted a similar, wow, we really were out of line, weren't we? Realization from your wife is, not encouraging, to say the least. I'm floored by the fact that mother-in-law lied to the priest. As a Catholic myself, the thought would never even cross my mind. Mother-in-law thinks she's so holier than thou but thinks it's okay to lie like that? In my opinion, she's not a Catholic, she's a bigot. Your mother-in-law still has control over your wife, and maybe your wife's eagerness to please her mother outweighs her loyalties to you? This. My mother-in-law started planning on doing the same to our son, who was baptized, but just not in her church slash religion. My husband and I said nope, my mother-in-law never babysat my kid anyway so she never had access to him without us being there. But my husband standing up was crucial. The fact that his wife chooses her mother over her husband is the real issue here. Well, at least one of the real issues. It's great to see spouses as a strong unit. Back in my 50s when my grandparents had their first kid, my granddad's parents tried to push them to baptize their daughter Catholic, even though they'd agreed to raise the kids Orthodox, so my grandmother wouldn't be excommunicated. And luckily my grandfather basically told them to stop pushing it or F off. Glad you haven't given the divorce papers yet, and you have a lawyer advising you. Do not make any decisions when you are angry. Take time to see if this is what you really want. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to accept my son's relationship with his stepsister? Some backstory, when my son Nathan was two, he met a friend in his daycare class, who will call Abby. Her dad, Jack, was one of the only other single parents there, as his wife had left after Abby was born. Jack and I bonded over our children and ended up dating for a year and a half before getting married, and we had our daughter Eliza less than a year later. Jack and I always raised all three of our children the same. And though they knew that Nathan had a different dad and Abby had a different mum, we had never thought to question if they saw each other as siblings. Then, last week, Abby and Nathan sat Jack and I down and told us that they had something important to say. Abby started in about how for the past few years her and Jack had been in a romantic relationship. She said that it happened after they were both adults, 
that they had gone to relationship counseling when it first started, and that they were seriously thinking about marriage. Nathan then told us that they had admitted to having feelings for each other as teenagers, but had never acted on it because they were afraid of ruining their friendship, hurting each other, and most of all what we would think. At this point, Jack looked at me, grabbed my hand and hugged our children. He told them that he was sorry for us keeping them apart and that he could tell how happy they are together. I just got up and left. Where I might be the a-hole. My husband is right, they do look happy together. In fact, I've never seen my son or daughter happier. But I just can't accept this. I haven't responded to any of their messages or calls, and pretended I wasn't home when they tried to visit during the day. I've been fighting with Jack since this happened, even so far as telling him that if it were my choice, they would never have my blessing, and I would put them both in therapy for having in desires. This really upset him, and the fighting got so bad that I had him sleep in the guest house. I've never gone this long without talking to my children. I've never fought my husband. I have no idea how to navigate this, and every time I think about it, their whole relationship just makes me sick and angry. That being said, I know I'm hurting my children. I know I'm hurting my husband. Where Jack might be the a-hole. Since Abby and Nathan told us of their relationship, Jack has been going on tirades about how unsupportive I am, about how bad of a mother I am, and about how I didn't do this to Eliza, she's gay, and he's been comparing her and her girlfriend's relationship to Nathan and Abby's. He's even threatened me with divorce, how he would get full custody of Eliza, she's 17, and how he would, take me to the cleaners if I didn't accept our children. He hasn't talked to Nathan or Abby about my reaction, but he has threatened too. So, Reddit. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Both of my children have admitted the therapist, did not know they were raised together, at all. Edit 2. Sorry, it's getting hard to respond to everyone. Yes, we are going into therapy together. No, I'm not still ignoring my children. Now for the top comments. I'm so so confused over the comments. Nathan and Abby were raised as siblings since they were toddlers and share a sibling not much younger than them. This isn't a case of you and Jack meeting when your children were all grown, or possibly a much younger sibling they didn't see much, or even living in different houses throughout their childhoods. They were raised as brother and sister, and while they don't share blood, they do have a sister together. I think your reaction is completely normal and justified. Yeah, once again the comments are mental. One mad effer is really asking, is this is a hill you want to die on? They've been raised with each other as siblings since they were two years old, this isn't as if it was two older children being forced under the same roof, who perhaps might not view each other in the same way biologically related siblings would. They almost certainly won't remember a time when they weren't raised together as brother and sister. They are as much siblings as any other brother and sister. All these commenters looking at this through a biological lens are pretty creepy and disgusting, honestly. I don't give a damn if they're not biologically related, their siblings and siblings should not be screwing each other. OP has every right to object to her two children entering into an intimate relationship. Edit, not the a-hole OP, obviously. Especially considering the update, in which they lied to the therapist. They're nuts. No a-holes here. This is beyond Reddit's pay grade and your family could probably do with seeing a mediator, counselor. This. This is complicated. No, they're not technically related. But they've been raised as siblings, OP counts Sarah as her daughter. That would raise many eyebrows. This would have a fallout for the entire family, as a family they will have to face the rest of the world. I know in Reddit world this shouldn't matter, but we live in the real world, not Reddit. This. I was going through comments and people have some serious NTA slash YTA opinions, like what? This is a whole situation and whether or not you, or husband, or even kids, are in the wrong, is something that isn't important right now as much as what you do to move on, OP seriously are you going to hide every time you see them? You're the a-hole. They are adults and it sounds like they took the correct steps before starting a relationship. If you continue, you'll lose everything, is this a hill you're willing to die on? Perhaps, you should consider therapy to work through your issues with their relationship. After all, they aren't biologically related so this isn't an test. You can't force them to feel like siblings just because they grew up together. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. Turn the notification on to get updated on my